This mini PC has two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, four two and a half gig ethernet ports, and a brand new eight core processor. That processor has a built-in GPU and the entire package should sell for under $300. This is one of the most exciting mini PCs we've looked at in a long time, so we'll, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the Quotum Q1132H6. Now that is a whole bunch of gobbledygook and I don't really know what that model number means, but what I can tell you is that this has become a favorite little mini PC here in the STH studio. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why. Now this system is an update to a really popular system we had on STH, which is this Quotum fanless box here. Now this used an Intel C3758 Denverton processor, which had eight cores, but it also provided our four 10 gig ethernet ports. We also had other expansion for more storage and also networking here. We'll let you go and look at that review if you want to learn more. At the same time, when we did the system, there were a couple of very common comments and those common comments really centered around two things. One, folks wanted to have a more modern processor architecture. The other thing though, is that folks also wanted 10 G base T because well, a lot of folks just have 10 G base T networks. Personally, I really like SFP plus, but I totally understand why you might want 10 G base T instead. I get it guys. And so as great as the system is, there was room for improvement or at least a different version for other folks. And that is really what we're looking at today. With that, I think it's time to get to the hardware. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see here is that this looks a lot like it's a fanless box, right? I mean, this looks like a fanless chassis and I can tell you just holding it in hand, it feels very beefy, but there's a fan. I know there are folks that are gonna, number one, look at this and think, hmm, I could mod that. And number two, there are other folks that are gonna look at this and say, hmm, could I get away without a fan? And so we're gonna talk about that when we get inside the chassis, but for now, we're gonna go and look at the ports. Now on the front of the system, we get a power button, some status LEDs, and then we get an eSIM card slot. There is an option to go and add a 5G modem to this. We don't have that here. And I don't really know a lot of the details because we just didn't have that to go and test, but it is listed on their website. Now, next to that, we have a console port because this is designed to be a network box. And so we have a console port. We get three USB three ports and one USB two port, giving us a total of four front panel USB type A ports, which to me is awesome in a mini PC like this because I think folks will use this more than just for a network box. I think there are applications beyond that. And one of the reasons for that is next to it, which is that we have both an HDMI port and a display port. Now this little system can actually drive up to three displays because we have an integrated GPU on the brand new Intel Core 3 and 355 processor. But to do that, you need to get to the other side and you'll see that we have a USB type C port, which has that display port alt mode. There's also another USB type A 2.0 port. And then you'll see that we have our DC power input. Next to that in red, we have our two 10 G base T ports. Now, 10 gig ethernet is one that I know a lot of folks have wanted to see for a long time. And another thing that you need to know is also what kind of network controller is behind that, right? Because if you have old network controller IP, you can't do things like multi-gig. Luckily, these are using the previously Quantia, but now Marvell AQC 113C Nix. And so you have a relatively modern network controller in here. Now, I would do want to point out that the 113C is not necessarily, you know, the highest offload. I mean, there's definitely a big difference between you know, the offloads that you would get in a high-end, you know, Mellanox ConnectX 6, 7, ConnectX 8 NIC or something like that. But on the other hand, um, for a low power PC, I think this is awesome. The other thing that it gives you is the ability to go run multi-gig and you also have four two and a half gig ethernet ports. These are all Intel I226V ports. And so they're the more modern version or more updated of Intel's two and a half gig ethernet controller. Or another way to look at this is that you have a 30 gigabit per second networking system that's low power, has eight cores and it's uh, like 300 bucks. One other thing I wanna point out is that there are cutouts and holes for antennas if you wanna go put an antenna in here, if you want to go and do wireless off of this as well. Overall, this is a very compact package. It looks pretty darn cool. And uh, I think you just want to see what's inside. So let's get to that next. Okay, now getting inside the system, there are four screws. You pop those off and then the bottom cover comes off and you'll see that we have a little fan here. This is one that I know is gonna be very controversial, especially once you see the inside of this because it does two things. One, it makes it a little bit harder to service because you have a little fan and you have to pull that off, but also it does add some noise to the system, which is kind of a bummer. 
The plus side, however, is the fact that, well, you get some more airflow, which is always nice. Now I configured the system really to be more of a router and a firewall rather than being a high-end virtualization system with tons of memory or anything like that. Now let's take a look at the motherboard really quickly and especially the user serviceable side, which is this side over here. What you're gonna see is a pretty standard mini PC layout. We have our DDR5 SODIM on this side. Now on the memory side, we tested both eight gigs and 16 gigs. Thank you to the STH YouTube members for your support so you can go buy components to go test in this. But I wanna point out that this takes only DDR5 4800. So you don't need to go buy, you know, DDR5 5600 or anything like that. Just get the least expensive DIMMs that you can or SO DIMMs that you can. This does not support ECC memory, which is something that is, you know, frankly, a little bit of a bummer, but it does make sense because of the processor that's involved here. Now, of course, even though this is DDR5 4800, it is a single channel platform because it's that, you know, Alder Lake, Twin Lake type system. And so you only can put one SO DIMM in here. It does mean that, you know, you don't necessarily have the most memory capacity nor the most memory bandwidth. But on the other hand, um, you know, frankly, it's like having two channels of DDR for 2400, which, you know, that was a Xeon E class system a couple generations ago. So, you know, one dim, maybe you get less power and that's the reason that this is good. I, I don't really know. I know a lot of folks are gonna say, hey, I would have preferred to have dual channel memory, more memory capacity. That is the limitation that you have here. The other thing is that we have an M.2 slot here for our storage. This is PCIe Gen 3 and I think it's a buy one slot. So you're not gonna get super fast storage, but frankly, these days, NVMe storage is just, uh, you know, it's usually less expensive or the same price as SATA storage. And so getting an NVMe PCIe Gen 3 drive is just, it's fine these days, right? I wish it was a little bit faster but on a, especially like a firewall, frankly, a PCIe Gen 3 by one NVMe drive is plenty fast for this class of device, right? Now, of course, if you are doing virtualization on this, you might want faster storage for certain VMs, but if you're just, you know, running the like kind of lower performance VMs and stuff on this, this is plenty, especially things that could run on like SATA or two SATA drives that can run on this NVMe drive, no problem. Now, of course, folks that are doing like really high-end virtualization, number one, they probably want faster storage, but number two, they probably also want a higher-end processor. So I don't really think that this is the class of device if you're doing high-end virtualization that you want, but on the other hand, you know, at least you have NVMe storage. And for those that want to do a little modding, and I'm just going to point this out real quick, is that you do have another input for a DC input as well as an hard drive power port. At the same time, one of the things I do wish is that the fan was just a normal four pin PWM fan header instead of, you know, this one, because I just feel like that would make modding the fan a lot more accessible. I also feel like, by the way, that if you had a 120 millimeter fan, that would make this so much more accessible and also provide just a ton of airflow. So to me, the number one thing I would want to mod would be this whole bottom situation with a fan. Now, after a little disassembly, we have the motherboard out. And so we can talk about the side that you're really not supposed to see, but it actually is pretty clean, especially on a motherboard motherboard like this. So first thing here, this is the Intel Core 3 N355, which is the successor, I think, to the Intel Core i3 N305, but it's just the new version. Now we're gonna talk about the performance in it a sec, but it is an eight core processor. It has an integrated GPU. So if you, you know, want an Intel integrated GPU, you have that here. And it also only has nine PCIe lanes or configurable IO lanes, which means that you just physically can't have that much IO in a system like this. Frankly, this is not the best IO system just because you just don't have as much IO as you possibly could on a larger platform like the Intel C2758 systems, the range of systems that we looked at previously. Now, the other things that you can see on this board is that we have four Intel i226V, NICs, as well as the two Marvell Aquancha or AQC 113C NICs. So we have all of our NICs on this side. And let me show you what they do in terms of cooling here, because that's also quite important. What you'll see here is that we have our cooling strip. So this is the strip that goes across and hits all six of the NICs. We then also have the cold plate for the CPU. You see that we're actually making pretty darn good contact here. That has been a problem in some of the other mini PCs from other vendors. We really haven't seen that from the Quotum guys. Now this little block right here, the design of this is that that transfers heat away from the SOC and into this top chassis. So even though there is a fan on the bottom really to cool that memory and storage, on the top side, you essentially have what is more or less a fanless chassis. And by the way, holding this in my hand, this is certainly pretty heavy. Now I'm just counting real quick. I think it took me like 17 or 18 screws to be able to get to this side of the motherboard. But the one point that I think is really important here is that, um, you know, you really only need four or five to service all the components that are user serviceable. You probably won't go to the side of the motherboard ever. So I don't really see that many screws as an issue. 
Now talking about the performance real quick, this uses the brand new Intel Core 3 N355 processor, which is an eight core, eight thread processor built on the efficient cores. These are not the old E cores like we saw in the old Denverton systems, like that C3758 system. This is, you know, the newer, generation of e core so we get more performance which is just nice on the other hand the n305 to n355 it's a very very tight race i couldn't really find that much that was different between them i think it's just a little bit of a performance like a 100 megahertz here and there clock increase that doesn't seem like a lot and frankly it wasn't really a lot on our benchmarks we saw really close results every single time so it's good performance but i wouldn't necessarily say it's great performance now of course if you didn't need all of the memory and you just wanted more cpu performance then we got on that Denverton system, this would be exactly what you want. There is one other thing though that we should point out, which is that this system has the integrated Intel GPU. So if you do want to use that GPU for any reason, like you want to have those three display outputs going and showing dashboards or just using it as a mini PC, you could totally go do that. And the N355, by the way, is not really that bad of a desktop experience anymore. This is actually a pretty usable desktop experience. In fact, on the other set, we often use an N305 system because it's low power and quiet. We use that really to go and power the display that you often see on STH when I'm on the second set. Speaking of power, let's get to that next. Okay, so what you're gonna see next to me is that we have this set up and we're in the BIOS because I wanna show you a couple things. Like first off, um, you know, one of the cool things about the system is that when we go into the actual hardware monitor, you can see that we have the fan speed RPM actually showing up here. Some of the other systems in this class that we've seen that had, uh, you know, fans in them didn't really have this information available to the system. So actually having it in the BIOS and in the hardware monitor means that we can pull it out later if we want to in our monitoring tools. Something just to look at real quick is that this actually has quite a bit when it comes to BIOS settings. But the other kind of fun thing is that if you go to the power and performance, you can also, you know, do things like change the GPU because if you're not going to use it for like virtualization server, you don't need that on turbo performance. Something that's neat here is that on the CPU side, the BIOS is certainly not the most bare bones that we've seen in including things like being able to just change things like TDP settings. You'll see we're set at like uh, 15 watts and stuff here. But I think it's just interesting the fact that this platform actually has all of those settings available where many do not. Okay, let's get the OS booted and we'll show you the power consumption of this unit. Okay, so we're now booted up into Proxmox VE. And I just wanted to show you what this looks like, especially the Intel Core 3 N355, what that looks like in terms of idle as well as maximum power consumption. So what you'll see here is that we have our package power consumption, and you can see that this is jumping around somewhere between maybe 0.6 to maybe 1.1 watts or so. Now, something to keep in mind is that even at idle, we're never gonna get down into like that six, five, six watt range, even on a low power CPU like this. And the reason for that is you have to remember that we have a couple things going on here. Not only do we have that CPU or that SOC, but we also have two 10 G base T controllers, four Intel I226Vs. We have a M.2 SSD in here, a SODIM, and we also have that fan spinning. So we just add a little extra idle power consumption based on our configuration. Now, let's take a, another step and see what happens when we look at the idle at the system level. You look over here and what you'll see is that we have somewhere between about 13 and about 14 and a half watts pretty consistently. In terms of noise, this is not a silent system by any means. Our studio's baseline is about 34 dBA, and you'll see that this is somewhere in that 39 to 41 dBA range at idle. So to me, the big thing is that this is not a silent unit, especially at idle. I mean, I'm standing right next to it and I can certainly hear it. If it was tucked away somewhere, it would just be white noise. But on the other hand, you do hear it. So if you are expecting this to be a silent unit, this is that's totally not right. Now, let's talk about what happens when we start to stress the system. And so now we're putting stress NG here. What you'll see is that our maximum frequency that we're getting on all the cores is somewhere in that maybe three gigahertz range. Then you'll also see that our power consumption is going up quite a bit. So if you were to look here, you'd see that our package power consumption is up around just under 10 watts or so, which is significant, right? Because that's over nine watts more than what we saw at idle. So what you'll see in terms of temperatures, and we've let this go for a couple minutes at 100%, and you'll see the temperatures go between maybe about 47 Celsius and about 52 Celsius. Realistically, you're not gonna be running the CPU at 100% all the time like we're doing in a stress test like this, but even in that stress test scenario, the temperatures are fine for just, you know, 24 seven use. Like I wouldn't freak out if this was around 50 Celsius, uh, just as a normal system running it. I mean, 
it just wouldn't freak me out because that's what these SOCs are designed to do. Now, in terms of power consumption and noise, you'll see that our power consumption isn't that maybe 38 and a half to maybe 40 watt range, which is quite a bit, especially when you think you're getting in a 15 watt SOC. And one other thing to mention is that we're not really stressing, like we don't have extra SSDs in there. We don't have, you know, the uh, all the NICs running at 100% or anything like that. This is literally just a CPU SOC is making it hit this power level. So that's pretty significant. The noise only went from about 40 dBA up to about 42, 42 and a half dBA. So this is certainly not the loudest system by any means. Instead, I actually think that this system is relatively quiet, especially when you talk about the load noise, but at idle, I wish it was a little bit quieter. Hey guys, this is just a little nitpick, but I think it is kind of important. And it's something that I wish that they did a little better job of here. So something that you'll notice is that on our Proxmox VE, you know, we have six NICs. We have ENP, then a number, then an S and a zero. And that number can go anywhere from one to seven on this. So when we installed Proxmox VE on this, we figured out that the lowest uh, enumerations, the lowest numbers, those were the 10 gig ports. But then the higher ones, those were all of the uh, two and a half gig ports, so the Intel i226Vs. So of course, what I like to do is I always like to put a management interface for Proxmox on an end. So either, you know, the right side or left side, like one of the two end ports. And so I just picked the lowest number, which was ENP4S0, because I thought that would be one of the end ports. So the weird thing is, even though there's not an ENP3, I thought that, you know, ENP4, since it's the lowest number, would be the lowest number here. And that's how they would tie out, because this would be ENP4, 5, 6, and 7. So I plugged it in, and we didn't get any activity on the little light. So then I was like, okay, well, if this isn't, maybe it's opposite day, and maybe the one that's labeled six, maybe that's the one that is the lowest enumerated two and a half gig NIC. So I plug that in, and it didn't get anything. So at this point, I thought I might be going crazy. I also tried the 10 gig NICs, that didn't work, and all that kind of stuff. And so the crazy thing is that even though ENP four, five, six, and seven are the two and a half gig NICs in the OS, ENP four ties to port four here. So these things aren't in any order that makes any sense. So just to me, that is a total bummer because it just feels like something that could be better. It's a total pain in the butt when you set these up, you should always have these things be in order. So that way, the way that Linux sees these and enumerates these is the same as they actually show up here. That is just a little tiny nit, but it's a little quality thing. Okay, so in all these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. I mean, what do we learn from this? Frankly, I really like this platform and I really like it if you really want three things. One, you want the new e-cores, so you want that N355 processor. If there was an N305 versus an N355, frankly, to me, they're essentially the same. I don't really see a huge value in the N355, and that, to me, is a bummer. I wish that Intel really pushed, you know, it's like a two-year newer processor, so you just kind of want it to be faster, but it's pretty darn similar. Now, we've tested this with things like OPN Sense, but, of course, we also tested it with Proxmox VE, so if you want to run virtualization, you can do that here. The other thing, though, is that I think the 10G base T, so that, to me, is a huge feature here. We've seen a lot of systems with four or five, two and a half gig ethernet ports, even up to six, but really adding those 10 gig ethernet ports, I think is a big one for folks. We get a lot of comments on that as well as, you know, people want newer cores. And so I think this really addresses those two. The one thing though, that I think is a, another bummer is just the fact that there is this fan on the bottom. This fan, I understand why it's here because you want to cool the memory and the storage. You actually don't need it to be able to cool the CPU side. It's really to cool that memory and storage. And just to me, I wish that it was a, just a quieter fan. And so uh, I just, you know, maybe this is a feedback to quote them. I just wish that you guys could put a lower noise fan in here because I just think getting into that 40 dBA range on a box like this is a bummer. I also wish that there was a way for this to be completely fanless because that would be nice. One thing I do think folks will do is eventually they'll go and put really quiet 120 millimeter fans on this heatsink side because it does improve airflow and it will improve cooling quite a bit. We didn't really necessarily need that on the system, but I think that there are folks that just love doing cooling and they'll figure out a way to go do that. Overall though, for a 300-ish dollar bare bones package, I think this is absolutely awesome, guys. I really like the system. We've been running it for a couple of weeks now and it has been perfect for us, so I really like it. I love to hear what you guys think though and maybe what would be your suggestions for this platform. If you have those, definitely go put those down in the comments down below. If you like this video though, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.